Hi everyone, my name is John Lee and today we're going to go through some tips for Pupilage Gateway as well as sharing, you guys, uh, sharing to you guys what's been happening in my life and how it is as a barrister training course student. So right now, as you can see, I'm in my room. It's a tiny room, but we love it. I'm not going to lie to you, the quality of this camera is not great. I'm recording this on an iPad Air. My camera, my iPhone is out of commission. So much so that I have to record the audio on my laptop. <laughs> like, let me show. <laughs> oh, sorry. My bad. Anyway, we are not letting that stop us from getting our message across. We are not stopping that from sharing the knowledge. We are not gatekeepers. Let us remind ourselves that in the bar, we are encouraged to share, to uplift each other. And this is just common decent, uh, common human decency. So let's get on with the program. So I'm not going to lie to you, disclaimer, I've actually recorded this for the third time now, not knowing that my iPhone was not recording anything. Silence, please. Anyway, so um, this actually comes from uh, a follower um, from my Instagram, Lawfully. If you haven't checked that out, please do so. It'll be more updates and more of a day-to-day -day scene on how it is as a BTC student. Plug over. So um, she was asking like, oh, you know, like, what do you think I should do? Should I do an SQE? Should I do an apprenticeship? What are the things that I should do um, in order to have a really great application for training contracts or even um, pupillage con uh, pupillage Pupilages. Yes, one word. Anyway, um, so that's what I'm trying to do as well, but um, you do have to, uh, please, I am very sorry for the quality of this video, um, although, I don't know, it's kind of serving. <laughs> anyway, the main goal of, the, actually, let me just give you a bit of background. Um, as well, even before we get to the program. I know, I know, it's already three minutes. I'm not even in it. I'm not even, like, giving you tips yet. Hang in there, okay? There's, uh, there's context. And for once, I don't have to be so prim and proper, um, unlike uh, how I have to face the court. Obviously, you know, sensibility and stuff like that. But, you know, we can, we can, let, we can let loose a little. In fact, I'm wearing an Oxford University shirt without even studying in Oxford. Let me be, and the fact that I just said it's a shirt, when in fact it is a hoodie. Let me be. Let me let me live my pace, my pace, my peace. Anyway, so a couple of weeks ago, I went to Inner Temple to do a qualifying session. If you don't know what that is, um, in order to become a fully qualified barrister, before you even be, before you're even called to the bar, you need to do two. 12 qualifying sessions um, and the majority about like preparation to go to the bar networking events um, skills honing events and stuff like that so for example my first one was advocacy where I had to do a bail application in front of um, a criminal barrister insane but you know that was the baptism of fire for me as well as um, legal research on that day so that counts as two qualifying sessions some uh, some events may um may ask you to do two of uh, two events in order to count as one qualifying session. So for example, this week, um, back in Tuesday and today, Thursday, I had to appear in front of the Royal Court of Justice um, to be pretend witness for um, Inner Temple Moots. And I think this is part of the advocacy, uh, advocacy course for pupil barristers. I'm sorry, I'm burping. Um, but it was really interesting and I was able to also meet up uh, meet with people barristers as well as high court masters yes ma'am yes ma'am anyway wow i didn't even get to the point we're already five minutes in please i just treat this as a podcast like do something whilst you're listening to this please <laughs> anyway um so i went to this pupillage q a at a temple it was a qualifying session and one of the panelists is Blessing from Blessings at the Bar. Yes, ladies and ladies. Um, essentially, uh, she's essentially one of the content creators. And I think one of the only content creators who 
um, who became a barrister, you know, most of the time with law students and stuff like that, most of the time they're LLB students, LLMs, um, and solicitors, you know, Evie Corns, Evie Cornwall, I think that's her name. Yeah. Um, and can you name anyone else other than Blessing who is in the bar? Who is at the bar? Not yet, because I'm not at the bar yet. Ah! Manifestation. Oh my gosh, I look so ready. And if um, head of people just watch my video, I am scared. Anyway, um, my justification is this is what a realistic person applying to the bar looks like. And a realistic prospect I shall become. Anyway, I'm here to share. Um, and it's more of a downtime kind of thing. So, uh, oh my gosh, so much, like so much back context and I haven't even got to the point you know when you're at the bar you have to go straight to the bar like when we uh when the advocates were doing the civil mute today the judge said when you do accept um evidence in cheap get oh no um cross-examination get straight to the point i want you to uh i want you to seem as if you smell blood in the water and I was like, it was a brain-altering moment for me. I was like, yes, I agree. Let's do that. <sighs> Seven minutes in, we're still not into point. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so um, I was just really inspired by Blessing, who is one of the content creators who is a barrister. And one of the things she said was, you know, when you go to pupillage, when you apply to anything, never underestimate your hobbies. Never, like, forget them. Because uh, for her, not only was she a content creator, she was also an independent music artist. Um, so after, you know, her pupillage interviews and stuff like that, the, um, the interviewers would straight away ask her either about her content or her music, and I'm just like, that's so bizarre, because there's nothing legal, but at the end of the day, people at the bar are people, yes, they're not just all law academics, they're not just all lawyers, they are people with passions, like, for example, one of my friends who's doing the BTC, Matt, if you know, you can find him on the England Rugby Instagram page, because he has a mighty moustache, he's a referee, um, and his story is amazing. Um, and the other people as well who already had pupillage or um, are about to start pupillage, like, these people, some of them had past lives. So some of them are military vets, some of them are headmasters, um, some of them uh, might have been uh, registered and was able to advocate in different jurisdictions. You never know. Um who is at the bar and I think that's the point as well because the bar is supposed to represent society as a whole because you're representing them and hopefully more and more um, I mean the typical uh, when we think of barristers and judges right now you know we think of traditional white old men but more and more the bar is relatively changing to in order to become a bit more representative of the society itself so i want to be part of the change and as i say in my linkedin bio i am on the way i am on the way to become a uk supreme court judge ensuring the path i leave behind is open and wide enough for everyone else inclusivity So, what do you take away from that? What you take away is that you don't underestimate your hobby, and it represents you as a person. You need to be car uh, You need to be unique. You need to ensure that you can show that you're more than just someone who memorizes all these law and knows how to apply them. You're a human being. So that's why I'm encouraged to um continue my um my YouTube page. Um, despite the fact that editing is going to be hard because <laughs> I'm telling you, I resources are not it. I mean, yes, I, I, was, I was able to save up and get myself an iPad, um, but my phone storage is so minimal. I can't even record on it. And then 
even if I was able to, when I tra- when I transfer it on my laptop, my laptop doesn't have enough storage for Premiere Pro to process fast enough. Like literally, editing like a ten minute video would take me two hours. Like very simple, basic edit, cut, stop, paste, not even anything like SFX and stuff like that. We move, we digress. So that's one of the uh, tips I'd like to say when you're applying to the bar. Obviously, I, um, this comes with a disclaimer that it is my first time applying to People Edge Gateway. Um, so for any people barristers out there, tenants, um, you know, professional uh, professionals out there, feel free to inject um, corrections and further elaborations down in the comments below um, so we can have a healthy discussion and we can help everyone out that is the main goal here um second tip is uh what is the second tip oh my gosh oh yeah second tip do as much volunteering and pro bono work as you can one of the three apparent (laughs) i think this is what i um this is what i assume um from everything that i've heard and what people have said to me but the three holy trinity of pro bono is advocates um fru which is the free representation uni uh, unit and the bail for immigration detainee i'm currently volunteering for the lot latter and what we do in bail immigration detainee is that the premise is if you are um, a non-british citizen so even if you have leave to remain uh eu settlement status student visa stuff like that if you commit an offense that's more than 12 months you get an automatic deportation order after you serve your sentence um however we believe that everyone should be treated like normal citizens so why should you be deported if you already uh done your time um so what we do as a charity is that we help out um we give outreach packs um to immigrants um so that they can go to their bail hearing and ensure that they have enough support uh in order to you know argue their case and then if it's very complicated and so forth we take it on we instruct barristers and solicitors um and some of the cases have went all the way up to supreme court and some of the um, judges have noted how immaculate the bundles that bid bail for immigration detainee does and I'm just like, wow, I want to learn from that. If you know anything about me, I do love it. I do love organization. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I do love a bit of paperwork. It is weird. And um, probably one of the reasons why I like public law. Anyway, anyway, that is that. I put it out there. Um so yeah. So do volunteering. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, so if you're doing a uh, bail for immigration detainee or uh, any pro bonos, that's great because um, especially for um, for some of these ones, um, they can give you accreditation. Uh, accreditation, whereas uh, for example, in bid, if you do OISC level three, um, which uh, the charity actually was well, actually the accreditation is free. Um, yeah. So if you do OISC level three. You're able to advocate on behalf of people on the f- in the first tier tribunal. So you're able to do a barrister's job before you even qualify as a barrister. And so when you go to pupillage uh, interviews and stuff like that, and they say like, okay, what do you think? Um, what do you think the job entails, or how can you show us that you know you can do the job? You can be out there and say, hey, I've already done the job. I'm a perfect fit for your chamber and clearly you're one of the chambers that I have a big passion about. So for example, if the um an immigration sets and stuff like that. So you don't need to teach me that much. You just need to put me in and we're ready to go. You know, you're putting yourself a very strong case um once you have this advocacy skills, which is actually very hard to get as well, because is like I mean, sometimes it feels like a catch twenty two situation. So like, you need advocacy skills, but you only be able to advocate once you become a barrister. But there are other ways to advocate as well, such as campaigning, such as volunteering for a uh, something uh, for a 
a course that you are really passionate about as well. So, you know, feel free to be out there. Um, I when I was in secondary school, I was a member of U Parliament, and we actually had a chance, and we're the only other organization apart from the House of uh, the UK Parliament itself to actually go to House of Commons and debate and. That was a very like brain like brain chemistry altering moment for me as well. So I was really um grateful for the British Youth Council um that they can organize that for us. Thank you so much for that. Um, so yeah, second point: volunteering and pro bono work. Now a bit a bit a bit a bit a bit a bit a bit, a bit, a bit about um how my uh BTC journey is going so far um and what I want to share with you guys as well so currently right now I'm a barrister training student with an L- uh, who's also doing an LLM we know this we done this and I'm nearing towards the end of my first term so next term from January onwards we're going to start doing BSB modules this means like modules that are um that are professionally accredited um, and other advocacy um, and litigation-based modules so, such as cross-examination, drafting, so forth, yada, yada, yada. Um, so right now I'm trying to do all of my extracurriculars or like majority uh, or the bulk of my extracurriculars right now. Um, but if there are some things that you can't find in the societies that's already there, Make your own. So currently, right now in BPP, we don't have an active mooting or advocacy or bar society. So I'm proposing the BPP Dispute Resolution Society, whereby we focus on mooting, negotiating, and uh, mediating, so that we help out those who are in the BTC um journey and also the SQE slash LPC journeys as well. It's helping everyone out. We are a big tent. We help each other out. We are inclusive. Yes, ma'am. Uh. So, hopefully by the time you see this video, the society would have been up and running, but fingers crossed. Anyway, um, I'm currently loving it so far. Um, plot twist. Um, I have two modules right now. Criminal litigation and civil dispute resolution. So, criminal civil. When I was in undergrad, I adored criminal law and right now when i'm doing the btc i'm not gonna lie to you the civil dispute resolution module mm, cute cute although last week we um we did a workshop on part 36 offers so this is settlement offers without prejudice and if you make an offer and you decline it, and then when you go on, tr- uh, when you go to trial, the offer is actually not that far off um, from what you actually get. You may get penalized. Your bills might be affected. <laughs> mm, I'm thinking today. I'm thinking anyway. Yeah. So your mil- your bills might be affected. What are you gonna do about that? Okay. Sorry. Let's not be goofy. Um. But. Yeah, so I actually really like civil um, dispute resolution more than uh, criminal litigation right now. But who knows? Because it might change later on when we do advocacy, when we do cross-examination. Um, but one thing I realized is that, you know, when you do this vocational licensing course, it's it's kind of like a big tent. You have to cover every... Um, you, you, can, you, you must be a bit more general than what you... We're doing an undergrad where you can focus on immigration law, family, company, and so forth. Um, so you know it's, it really helps when uh, when you do mini pupilages, um, specific moot. So for, exa- um, for example, bail application hearing, um, so that you start to have a gist of what you're going to be doing when you practice. So we're there. Mm. Where was I going with this? Oh, this is so poor of me. Next time I'm going to write a script, but, you know, I was just, like, in the spur of the moment, I really just needed um, a video out. And I want this message out as well, you know. Um, oh, yeah, so that, yeah, I was talking about my um, BTC journey. So right now I'm trying to get myself involved as much as possible. So I already told you, Bill for Immigration Disney, um, volunteer, 
I'm at um I'm trying to create the society and I'll be president. At least I'll be president once in my life. I can't be president in the Philippines. I can't be prime minister. Well, you have to be British born in order to be prime minister. I'm, I need to check that. But mm, politics is not me. You know, <sighs> when that Rwanda judgment came out and some of the conservatives, uh, MPs were undermining the judiciary, I said, babes, never underestimate the third branch of government never underestimate the f never underestimate never underestimate one of the branches of government the judiciary as is as important as the legislature do not mistake that yes we we may be unelected, but that doesn't mean that the people, the society, did not put their trust in us. We are a um. What are we? I don't know. We 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 are part of the balance and checks of this government. Do not underestimate the judiciary. Yeah. So that's pretty much what I have um, in mind to talk to you guys about. Next time, um, when I'm more comfortable into this kind of like podcast, like just like have a you know have a kiki, have a sit down of um, just talking about live and give you guys a bit more insights of the bar. Hopefully, you know what you know what'll be fun when we do one of these um, episodes in bpp or in in a temple oh my gosh that'll be so fun <laughs> yeah mm. okay i want to share i want to share with you guys the world yeah because there's not enough content creators out there who are aspiring to become um barristers and obviously um especially with the bsb uh, new social media guidelines you know you have to do um, you have to act um, in order to maintain the prestige of the courts or like the integrity of the courts I need to find the specific wording for it but at the end of the day we are human we are we are humans we are we are people like you and me um, even though I'm you know my trajectory is towards uh, the bar and stuff like that we cannot deny that the, the people inside the bar are normal people so i want to share that with the world and also um to destigmatize the bar i think that's one of the most important things that i really really want to share as well because apart from you know the bar being a very competitive very um steep mountain to climb frankly we need to see uh, more diversity in all aspects of the bar not only um within like barristers but also within judges as well and you know i've openly put out there i want to become a uksc judge i want to aim for the top so what you gonna do so thank you for watching if you like this video slash episode like comment subscribe press that bell button um let me know uh, what specific topics you want to talk about um, I will try to stay clear of most political things, but if you want to know my political viewpoints, it's really not that hard to find. If you just look at my Instagram, both personal and um, professional, it's clear. Right. Thank you guys, and hope you enjoyed this video, to be honest. Hope you enjoyed this like mini sit-down that you can... Um, listen whilst you have your coffee, you unwind, you study. Oh my gosh, wouldn't it be so crazy to listen to this while you study? Insane. Yeah, thank you.